What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dev Build, a place where we're always searching for a better place to keep our whiskey. All right guys, so I'm up in the office today in, in the, the, the crux of Build Dad Build. This is where the literal video magic happens. I had to put video in there because I knew you guys would be like, oh, the magic happens, huh? How about that yoga swing? We're up here today because I'm gonna be using the Muse to cut a living hinge whiskey box. The idea is to be able to laser cut a whiskey gift box that can be flat pack mailed and assembled upon receipt. I apologize for the noise in the background. That is the, the Muse is running. Um, so before we make this box big enough for a bottle of whiskey, I'm gonna laser cut a test box to get an idea of how everything works. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this website today because they have a bunch of different box templates and we're gonna go into boxes with flax. If I can get it open, there we go. Okay, and the one that I like is this Flexbox 4 because it's gonna look like this. And I think that's gonna complement our bottle of booze well because uh, we'll be using bullet bourbon for this and that it has that nice curve to the side of the bottle. I've already generated this once, but basically you come in here, you're gonna, this is where you're gonna put your dimensions in, your latch size, that's, we're gonna see if we wanna change any of these things. And if you haven't, if you've never done this before, you need to go in and do the burn test under parts and samples to figure out what this number is. I'll link to a video down below where a guy explains this much better. Basically, it, it, it determines the, the width of the kerf cut so your finger joints will stick together and then you're gonna hit generate. Now I've already done this and I've already taken it over to Retina Engrave. And so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go in here and so it's just about 50 and we're gonna run a perimeter real quick. Go check on, go check on the laser. Okay, so that looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and hit go. All right, guys, we are down in the shop now, and uh, look at that. So here we have our pieces. You just have to appreciate, like those little fine laser cuts are what is allowing this to bend. Check that out. So cool. Okay, so I don't know exactly how to assemble this. I have an idea. that so the finger joints are actually pretty good I also wasn't expecting this whole thing to open I thought it was, I thought I thought this was just gonna hinge but this is proof of concepts um, that we likey likey I wonder if you could just you might just be able to glue that back on there and just have this thing open all right guys we're back up here in the office. Now that we know our proof of concept works, I wanna make this box out of walnut plywood. I've never cut or carved on walnut plywood before, so we wanna do some test cuts to figure out the best settings. I just want your laser to run at the highest speed and the lowest power to get it done. Having a lower power will extend the longevity of your laser and speed, obviously, to make sure that you can do projects in a timely manner. Okay, guys, bear with me. <laughs> I just recorded this whole thing and realized that some of the settings were off in this thing, so I'm redoing it. So this is the second time I'll run through this. Uh, but basically what this is, what you see up on the screen is a, uh, it's gonna be a test burn for the walnut plywood. You wanna run this on any new material that you are going to cut or engrave on. And Full Spectrum has a Muse Core group on Facebook. I'll link that down below. But basically I got this from their files group in there and I'm gonna walk you through it because it's a little different than something you would do in Lightburn. This will also kind of get you used to Retina Engrave because it kind of walks you through a little bit. Now when you pull this file in, uh, over here, this is the instructions on how to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that because we don't need it. I've already read them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through 10 boxes at a time. If I can get these to move. Where's my boxes? Okay, what I wanna do is select my boxes and just move them over a little bit so they're a little bit more under the numbers. Basically, right now, I have these set up to where this red box 
Over here, ignore the blue for right now. Okay, so if we look at our boxes here, you'll see the color and it corresponds with over here. So the red box is set to 10% speed, 100% power. We're gonna change that in a second. Orange is 20, yellow is 30, green is 40. So if you see that, this just corresponding to these guys over here and that's just showing us different layers. So we're gonna do this first row, we're gonna do 10%. Okay, and then, well this is, this goes up here, maybe. Well, let's see this one down here. Boop. And then the lime green, which I'm just gonna bring up here, that's just our, our lettering. So we're gonna run that once and then we're gonna shut this layer off. Next, we just wanna run our parameter. Let's go check it out. And hopefully you can see that little red indicator. It's just showing us where our parameter is running. Mainly right now, we just wanna make sure that it, the laser is gonna be on the material the entire time. So we hit perimeter stop. Close the lid, and then you can either run this from Retina Engrave or you can hit the Run Job button. And it's gonna ask us to make sure that we're doing what we wanna do. Turns out that I had those other numbers on a different layer, so I just went ahead and hid all the other elements and cut them in real quick. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our boxes, we're gonna move them down until they line up with 20. And then the easiest way to do this is we just have them all selected over here, so we can just come through and say 20, tab, 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 20. Okay, run a perimeter. I always run a perimeter just because I want to make sure that it has the new information. And then we, and this is the other way you can run the job, just hit run. And it'll tell you down at the bottom, it's gonna process. And then it's gonna tell you down here that it's gonna be about 48 seconds. All right, so you guys get the idea, right? So we're gonna come down and we're just gonna move this down to 30 now. We're gonna change all those power levels to 30. one I did, that I did wrong. We'll go ahead and poke these out. Poka poka, poka poka, poka poka. Okay, let's see, that one poke out. All right, so it looks like we probably wanna run 60% power at 20% speed. I know you might think 50, but 50 kinda had a little bit of give, and sometimes I find it splinters on the back if you, uh, if you do it. So I would say, unless we can poke a 40 out, yeah, I would say to go 60 just to be safe. Okay, we're back down in the shop. And this, not for drinking, not yet. Uh, I did reach out to Bullet Bourbon and ask them if I could use their logo in this video. And they said yes, and then they sent me a couple of bottles for reference. This is what I was talking about, about you've got this nice round bottle here. So I'm hoping that this, when we reduce this, this, this curve right here will match that a little bit and we'll be looking at that. But I've got this bottle right here and we're gonna pull the dimensions off this for our box. I wanna go one inch around each side but i know that the walnut plywood that i'm using is like 11 and 7 8 so we're gonna have to make that just a little bit smaller and maybe go like three quarters of an inch on the top and the bottom okay so let's see height is gonna be 11 and three quarters width go an inch to an inch six inches and then let's see how tall this bad boy is Okay, so it's about two and a half inches tall. We'll go three. Now let's go three and a half. Let's just see what that box looks like. I'm gonna miss you more. No, I'm gonna miss you more. No, I'm gonna miss you more. All right, let's go back up there. I've translated all of the measurements from downstairs into millimeters. 150. Our depth is going to be 85 millimeters. Oh, not that many and our height is going to be 300. Send it. And we're back in 
the shop. Woohoo! All right, so we have our pieces here and we are going to try to put these together. I will tell you that I tried to dry fit it earlier and it was not as easy as I had hoped. I'm going to turn you on to a little secret though. If your finger joints are too tight, get yourself a nail file. These things, I didn't even realize this. I mind Joseph at Rustic Legacy. Uh, he's the one that told me about this. And he's got a box of these in his shop. And these things, I never realized that nail files actually come in grits. If you look right here, if, if it's ever gonna pick it up, there we go. It actually says this, this is 100 and 180 grit depending on what size you're on. So it's a sandpaper and it's got a hard back to it. So if you're going to, if you need to sand something like finger joints that are gonna be a pain in your ass, you can just take this, stick it right in there and woo! What we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get the box together. If we can't, we're gonna sand it a little bit and then we're gonna see if it fit. Okay, so that looks like it, that looks like it's gonna work. Okay, so it looked like this. And we have a bottle of booze inside. Pretty cool, huh? Like a little delivery box, whoop. So we'll have to figure out, so what we wanna do is figure out a way to clasp this, right? Something simple that's gonna come over here. Maybe we do, I don't know, I don't have any leather. Maybe we do a leather binding or something like that. What we'll do is we're gonna engrave the front of this with Bullet's logo, but you could engrave this with anything. You could engrave this with, you know, favorite brother-in-law that divorced my sister because she's a bitch or something like that. You know, I mean, just the possibilities are endless. To the laser. All right, guys, we're back down in the shop. I know we're just up and down and up and down and up and down. But we're down here now, and I think it's the time for assembly. So I took this back upstairs, and I actually had to re-cut this again. But I went ahead and textured it and put uh, Bullet's logo on the front of it, and let's see how it goes together. So you get the box, open it up. And bam, booze. <laughs> it's a big, but I noticed a, a flaw with this box. Not and not this. I just haven't glued it together. What I noticed is that I want to I want to put packing around this, right? So it's not just rattling around in there. And if I keep this box this way, it's all going to fall out the side when I open it. So I made another one, and here she is. All right, so we're going to put this guy together. I cut the fingers a little, um, a little looser, so we'll definitely need to put some glue on this. But get this guy in here. It's always the, the first two pieces always go together easy, and then the last piece is always a pain in the butt because it's got to go two ways at once. So there we go. All right, and it gets pretty solid once you do that. But now we have kind of more of a book type situation here, right? So, we're definitely gonna glue this edge so it's gonna open like this. I dig it. All right, we did have a little burning up here and I don't know exactly why that is. I don't, I, I don't know why that, I, I don't know if the plywood was bent up just a little bit or down or something because, I mean, it was the same power and speed on all of this. I don't, I don't know why that one little area right there Got a little crispy. Guys, before we get to the results, I just wanted to say thank you guys for sticking around until the end of the video. I appreciate it. I would like to say a special thanks to Bullet for sending me out a little care package to work with. A special clinkies goes to you, Bullet. Mmm. The spoils. Victory. Really good stuff. Uh, I haven't heard a whole lot of the Bullet rye. It's, 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 it's yummy. 
to say the least. And I would like to say an extra special thanks to all of my Patreon members, especially my top tier patrons or my Boilermaker patrons, Stephen Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Zach Z, Jim Carter, and Andy the Viking. Folks, this one's on me. Let's take a look at our results. I have mixed feelings, mind you, because I think this front is by far the best front. This is carved a little deeper and so when I did the second one, I carved it a little less because I got some burning around the, the, the words up here and just didn't even think, oh, I can just sand that back. So I definitely like the three dimensions of this. The, the deeper engraving actually got down to that second layer of ply, which really gives you like that whole 3D look. Like that. Oh, so good. Uh, but I don't like the way this box opens because it folds all the way out. I actually have a piece of tape on here to, to keep it shut right now. But because it folds like this, now I can't get it open. And I feel like presentation wise, if you were going to have a bottle of booze in here with some, something packed around it, so it's not just rattling around in there, right? It would all spill out the side. I, and I think that experience just wouldn't be all that great. But I love the front of this so, so much. Now, as far as the way that this presents, I think this presents a lot better. Unfortunately, when I was applying the oil, it kind of washed out my logo here, so you can't see it nearly as well. I mean, it's there, and in person, you can see it a little bit better than you can on camera. But, so you get this, and you open it up, and bam, bullet. <laughs> I think that looks awesome. I mean, I, I think that presentation looks awesome. Look at that. So imagine, I don't want to drop a bottle of liquor on the floor. Um, imagine this front on this box, which is totally doable. And then bam. And then of course, like, you know, you can put whatever you want on here. I also thought about and naturally didn't remember until I was already finishing the box that I was going to, I was going to uh, laser engrave something in here too. Like whiskey friends are the best friends or something along those lines. But very cool. Um, proof of concept works. I dig it. Um, we still are working on some sort of latching mechanism. By we, I mean me, uh, because this doesn't want to hold really well. Um, and especially when you have packing and stuff in there, it kind of pushes it open a little bit. So we need a better deal. Like I said, maybe something as simple as just like a little hook latch over here you know, with like a little something and, you know, a little piece of leather on here or something. I just like how clean it is on the front. So if you guys have any suggestions on a good, like minimal latch that you won't be able to see, or, you know, maybe we just need to experiment with these tabs. These tabs are a little wide for the, uh, for the latching mechanism. And maybe that's something that just needs to change a little bit. But I dig the whole, like, it looks like it looks like a book. I mean, it looks like a presentation case. I think that's really awesome. All right, guys. Thank you for your time. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you've not subscribed, please consider subscribing. It does me a whole lot of good. And until next time, thanks for playing. And now I gotta get to work <laughs> on some of this bullet. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. What's up guys, I'm Nick, and this is Build Dad Build, where we're always searching for a good place to keep our whiskey, besides in our bellies. Oh, yeah. check this out. Reminds me of a girl I knew. <laughs> no one, nothing from the lender too close to me. And the network's offline again. Let me go check this shit.